Saturday evening. The track will be lightning fast. We were at 85 degrees earlier today here in Lexington. Still about 82 right now as we get ready for the start of tonight's card at 7 p.m. Light winds coming from the north-northeast should not be a factor. My name's Sam McKee, and we are joined by the leading driver in the sport, Yannick Jingra. We're going to shoot the breeze with Yannick and get the inside on his drives tonight. But right now, we want to update you on the changes. And so far, there's only one change in this evening's racing card. That's in the ninth race. Number four, that's my opinion, has been scratch sick. So scratch number four, that's my opinion, who is sick in race nine, a division of the Sun Beach Somewhere Bluegrass Series for the three-year-old Colt and Gelding Pacers. First post time this evening at Lexington at 7 p.m. And Yannick Jingra, leading driver in harness racing right now, over 11 million in purses so far this year. A week ago at the Little Brown Jug, I guess it was agony to ecstasy. Lion Somewhere breaks in his limb. Limelight Beach wins his and wins the final. Yeah, it was definitely a heartbreaking um, in the elimination. I, you know, going in, I thought my best shot to win the to win the jug. Even though I thought Lime Lime Beach had, had, a, had a chance, but you know, I mean, I thought my best chance was lying somewhere. And um, obviously, when he made a break, it was uh, devastating. But you know, it was short. Uh, it was for a short time because you know the other horse came back to the real next race and uh, and won his won his Ellen. What happened to Lion somewhere? I mean, you rated a pretty good fractions. He looked like he was well within himself. I didn't even see you move a muscle, and he just jumped. Oh no, I was just sitting there. You know, I was trying to save some um, some some for the final. I had the plug still in. The bridle was still up. You know, he's got a flip down bridle, but I, I didn't touch any of that. He got run, running in a little bit, you know, around the last turn, and uh, he just he just rolled off. You know, I, I really don't have an explanation. I thought maybe uh, he touched a knee or something, but um, there was no mark on his knees there. You know, he's just a fluke thing. You know, he's a really, really nice horse, and, uh, you know, I think he, uh, he would have the big chance on the final, no doubt about it. In Limelight Beach, it wasn't the easiest of trips in his limb in the sense that you really had to fight him in the pocket. You were straight back and seesawing him to get him off the bit. He was pretty grampy. Yeah, he sure was. You know, he, he actually run a couple times, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, in the second turn, uh, he, got, he got a little rolly there, but going to the half, um, I was all over David, and that was all I could to, uh, you know, to keep him off his back. He actually galloped for uh, maybe a stride or two, you know, uh, just being uh, over anxious. But uh, the minute I showed him daylight, yeah, he sure uh, exploded. And once you drew the rail in the final, and let's drink on it, not knowing as a big lever, you had to love your chances. Well, I mean, I didn't think it would have mattered. You know, I mean, Ronnie was like um, in the winter circles, like now, nah, now nah, we just had to hope uh, that we draw the rail. And I'm like, dude, it ain't gonna matter. You know what I mean? Like. Uh, you know, Limelight Lime, uh, Lime Beach can fly off the wing, and I, you know, like you just said, you know, uh, uh, the other one don't don't leave quite as fast. So uh, it wasn't really that much of a worry for me. Uh, I knew I'd be cutting the I'd be cutting the fraction in the final. What did winning the Little Brown Jug mean to you? It, it was it was an awesome feeling. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, uh, ever since you know I, I moved to Madeline, I've been uh, going to the Jug every year and uh, raced a few times in it, but I really never had a, a big chance to win it other than Rock and Roll Dance, and he had you no know, they're on the outside. So um, no. Uh, no, we're, being able to get it done was uh, it was a great feeling. Yannick, this year, for whatever reason, at Delaware, Ohio, the track almost seemed to favor closers. I have no idea what it was, but front end speed wasn't holding up. A lot of top, top horses didn't even come good closing quarters. What was the story from your vantage point? Uh, I think the track was a little bit deep, maybe a little bit deeper than years past, and, and it's a good thing, I think, you know, because, you know, it is uh, such a speed favoring racetrack usually. And, uh, you know, like I think it was uh, a little more fair this year than, uh, than in years past. Um, I don't really have a you know, great explanation, but that'd be the, uh, the only thing I can see. Yannick, when you win, it's easy to be gracious. It's a lot more difficult when you lose. But I just want to compliment you on how you handled the Father Patrick situation in the Hamiltonian. I was never more sure a horse was going to win a race in my life, and I'm sure you felt the same way. For some reason, he made a break at the start. But the very next race, you came back and won a major stakes race. You talked to the media. You met it all head on. And even though you were horribly disappointed, you handled it with grace and class. Thank you. Yeah, it was. Um, I mean, it was very difficult. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I mean, I might never um, have another chance like that. You know what I mean? It's uh, and, and it's for the horse as well. And like I said that day, um, you know, I might win it again, but he, he never will. You know what I mean? He's a great horse. Um, you know, the the most talented horse I've ever driven. You know, and um, you know, it's gonna be always gonna be a little blimp on his resume. But I think he's accomplished enough that. Uh, People uh, still uh, see him in, in the like of uh, Mac LaBelle and uh, Muscle Hill because I really believe he, be he, uh, he belongs in that category. Now, you also had a big win in Quebec, in Montreal the other day, the Prix de Tay, which they revived after several years, and you won it with Jimmy Tactor's horse, Sunfire Blue Chip, and right in your backyard. That had to be a pretty cool deal. That, that was, um, you know, that was one race I marked in the calendar, like in, in March. You know, I mean, the, uh, 
going home. Like I grew up watching the Pretty Day. It was uh, for three year olds, three year old Pacers back then. But I uh, I used to have the tape at home and and replay those those tapes, you know, thousands of times. I and mean, I'd, I'd be putting on the mute button and announcing the races myself. You know, I I love watching those races. And um, growing up, I was just dreaming of being a, maybe a driver in Montreal. Maybe one day be lucky enough to race in it. You know. And um, to be able to win the, the renewal, and all my family was there, my friends were there, um, my grandmother was there, which was really special, and um, it, it was a great thrill. You and Ronnie Burke and you and Jimmy Tank are dominating the sport right now, and so many times we hear Ronnie Burke say, well, we've got Yannick on the horse, or Yannick's been driving the horse, or we've got you back up. What is it about you two that seems to click? Uh, I mean, he's so easy. You know what I mean? Uh, he, uh, nothing really bothers him. You know what I mean? Like, he, he does a bad drive. He does, doesn't worry about it. Like, I pick off horses. You know, a lot of trainers uh, uh, wouldn't accept me picking off horses. You know, he's got 300 horses. I know I'm first call on most of them, and um, he's so understanding. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, like, I give you an example. Earlier this year, I had a hard pick between Bands of Angel and uh, and uh, J.K. She's a Lady. And I, I'd say, like, so many trainers come up to me, and they're like, how did Ronnie let you get away with that? You know, I mean, how did he let you drive with the other horse? But he, uh, he knows that it's a, it's a business. You know what I mean? Like, he, and he wants the best for me as well. You know, he, uh, and like he told me that day, in the he said, it, "I'm not telling you I don't want you to drive my horse. I want you to drive mine, but I won't be mad." You know, what I mean, do whatever you think is right. And um, you know, we have a great relationship. He knows I, um, I, I mean, I'll always be there to, to drive his horses, and uh, I feel the same way the other way. We have a great relationship. And um, we both uh, we both respect each other. And it's kind of ironic because it used to be that Ronnie concentrated more on the raceway horses, the older horses, and the Pacers. And Jimmy Tactor, you drove his top young trotters. Well, now Ronnie Burke's getting into the trotters and doing very well. He has Mission Brief and Habitat, two of the best of two-year-olds this year. How do you juggle that back and forth between Jimmy and Ronnie? Uh, that's the hardest part of my job. <laughs> Driving these horses is really easy. Um, but you know, both of them are understanding. You know, they. Uh, I try to drive the best horse, and and um, they both understand that. You know, they uh, as long as um, we all three of us can uh, can agree on that, I think we'll all have uh, success. And um, now, like you said, Ronnie was no before this year, like he was more like the raceway, but he's had, he's got a great crop of uh, two year old this year. And the same thing for Jimmy. Um, just try to to be fair to both of them. And and the one thing is that uh, I'll just tell him up up front. You know what I mean? Like I'm not gonna lie to need, need one of them. If if I say I can go at one, I'm not gonna change my mind five minutes before scratch time. You know what I mean? That's uh, that's the one thing about me. And I think they're also pretty good friends. Didn't Jimmy Tatcher go with Ronnie and Mickey when uh, Buckeye St. Pant raced in the Elite Lap to try to help him out over there? Absolutely, and I think that makes a big difference too. I think they both respect each other. No, I know they both respect each other very much. And um, you know, if they didn't like each other, I think then they'd be more of a pissing contest, maybe of uh, you know, you got to drive mine or you got to drive mine. no, or the other guy be saying the same thing. So uh, by them respecting each other and, and being friend uh, definitely helps me out. Somebody asked me, they said, why is Yannick Gingras so good? And I said, one thing from watching him drive, you usually take your time when you move a horse to the lead. You don't fire him right up and come with a backside brush. You seem to keep him on the bit, just take your time with a controlled move to the front. And every time you have to stop and start a horse, I think it takes something out of him. And you just seem very smooth when making that backside move. Well, it comes a little bit with experience too. You know, I, I used to be a uh, leaving the gate, an example, at the metal end, and um, thinking I, I got to be in front before the first turn, or like, you know, just fire him right out and, and make the front, but then then you, you get a little older, you get a little more experience, and realize that, um, you know, if you get to the front too quick, somebody else is coming, especially at the metal end, you know? So, uh, you know, and, and like you said, if you um, if you get a horse to go like a huge, huge eight, you know I mean, it definitely takes their toll on them, you know I mean? You try to, you know, slowly grind your way there, and, you know, and, and when you have the right horses and, uh, you know, you have the respect of the other drivers. You know, you don't have to be coming that fast. Uh, you'll make the front, you know, 99% of the time anyway. Now, a lot of people don't know this about you. You actually have a degree in accounting. What are your hobbies away from the racetrack? If you have a day off, do you like to play golf? Do you like to read books? What are, What's Yannick Jingra into? Honestly, right now, the uh, only my only time off I got is with the kids. You know, I mean, uh, sports with, uh, you know, Jaden plays hockey, Edison as gymnastic. Um, you know, uh, yeah, Jaden plays soccer as well, or try to spend some time at home. Uh, it's been a really, really busy summer, uh, not many days off. And, you know, I did like golf. I, I, mean, I played a little bit last year, but, you know, it's a sport that you have to play quite a bit to, uh, to be good at. And I just, I, I don't have the time right now. I, I can't be committed to, uh, to playing golf, and, and it takes the time away from being home. Well, if the kids are into gymnastics and hockey, it's a good thing you're making 11 million a year in purses because, believe me, that's pretty expensive stuff. Let's talk about your drives tonight. First race, number six. Whom shall I fear? The brother to Father Patrick and Pastor Stephen, off to a slow start to his career. 
Yeah, but you know what? I'm looking forward to racing him tonight. Um, I've trained him a couple times uh, in the spring, and I really liked him. Um, you know, he, uh, he he goes a lot like Father Patrick. You know, he's he's uh, more like Father Patrick than than Pastor Stephen. Um, you know, he got, he, I think he got a little sore in his feet and stuff. That's backed him up a little bit, but. Uh, um, I think he's going to be a good mile tonight. You know, if you look at his line from last week, he came in his last three quarters in like 125 and change. So um, I think tonight will be a is coming out party. In the fourth race, you've got number seven, Cartoon Daddy, the New York Sire Stakes star for the Burks, and it looks like you're in a division where he stands out. Yeah, yeah, he definitely is a nice horse. There's no doubt about it. Post seven, uh, it's not that big of a deal for him. Um, probably be looking for cover. You know, a long stretch here. I'm not sure he'd be a, a big fan of that. But uh, on the front, but uh, it, with a cover trip, I think yeah, he'll do some damage. One of the most interesting horses you're driving on the card is in the sixth race, number five, Odds on Amethyst, who's now in the Jimmy Tactor stable. And after what Jimmy's done with Master of Law, maybe he can get this horse straightened up. This horse is very fast. He won a Grand Circuit race here last year, but he is about as rank as anything. I've seen when he grabs on. Yeah, I've seen him uh, early in the year qualifying, and uh, he, uh, he definitely uh, he doesn't look like an easy horse. But Jimmy told me that um, no, he's perfect now. He's really easy on himself, and uh, he's two finger to drive. And um, he told me last week he was going to put me down on him, and he said he's ready to go. Moving on to the seventh race, you've got number five, Blood Brother. He's had a little bit of a layoff, but looks like his qualifier was sharp. He got really sick there um, just before the Sire Stake final. Uh, he had a bad start at Chester. And um, now he come up real sick, and Jimmy, Jimmy gave him a little time off, let him heal, and looked like his qualifier was good last week. Obviously, um, tonight he's in against uh, Art Speak, so that's gonna be that's gonna be hard. But uh, we're looking to, uh, you know, have a, a good experience for him, and and have him finishing it strong. Now the eighth race is going to be a shootout, best race of the night. You got Limelight Beach starting right at, right outside. Let's drink on it, and he's watching. Two heats in the jug. Will that take anything out of him tonight at all? I don't think so because uh, both eat really um, in a first city like you, we talked about earlier. He was raging the whole race and uh, he only had to go for an eight of a mile. And then uh, in the final, I never kicked the earplug. You know, he finished with the bit in his mouth, and so it's not like he was really stressed out and, and exhausted and just staggered home in, in any of those races. He uh, he had he had more left in both time, and um, I think he uh, he's a horse that's coming into his own. He's finally healthy. Uh, it was a problem for him uh, from the time that, you know, before they bought him, he, he was not healthy in, in the first couple starts. So uh, I think, like I said, I think he's finally healthy, and uh, I think he'll, he'll be good tonight again. Moving on to the ninth race, you've got number five, Some Star Somewhere. He was excellent here last fall, but been a little bit disappointing this year. Yeah, but um, you know, we've been waiting for this uh, for here. You know I mean? Uh, that's when he really came out last year. He, he struggled a little bit. Uh, uh, early in the year last year, and then when he came here, he won in 49 the second week, and he went through the, through the Breeders' Ground Pocono, won the elimination. You know, so uh, that's really uh, when he uh, he got good last year, and um, that's the reason. You, know, you look at his line; I had a tough pick in this race between Jimmy and this horse. You now Jimmy Tactor had a capital account, and uh, on paper they're both uh, they're both very very similar. But I just think this horse is going to step up big time. Tenth race, you're driving for Tactor, getting ready to roll very very fast, Philly. But man, she breaks stride for some reason, and it doesn't really seem like there's a pattern to it. No, um, I, I thought uh, we had her. Um, she had been good for four or five starts in a row, and I believe she was she was gonna well, she was definitely gonna win her elimination of the jugette, and I think they would have had a hard time beating her in the final. She's uh, super talented, and like I said, we, I thought we had her, and but you know I'm kind of glad that you no, know, her next start is here. You know, you don't want it to get into a habit, but um, this this track's gonna fit her perfectly. You know, she uh, she can race on the front, she can race from behind. Um, you know, those big wide turns here and, and the clay surface uh, is definitely going to be to her liking. Does she give you any indication when she's going to make a break or just roll off? Uh, no, it, sometimes she does. You know, at the Madeline in the Miss, in the Miss New Jersey, um, she uh, she showed and she showed me uh, going to the half, sh but I was able to save it that day and fi made the front anyway. But um, at, at Delaware, she didn't show it. You know, she was going along just fine, and I still had the earplugs in, and I was just I was getting ready to clear, and she just you know, rolled off that day. So uh, sometimes she does show it, sometimes she doesn't. Uh, Hopefully uh, we don't have to uh, really press her tonight, and sh I'm, I think she'll get the job done. What about the 11th race, number two, all-star rating, set the pace in the jug at second eat, but tired badly? Yeah, she did. You know, maybe it was a little bit too much, you know, two times on the front. And, uh, I mean, she's a real nice filly, and she, she got good here last year as well. You know, that's when she really started racing. Um, you know, probably going to try to trip her out tonight. You know, she had a too hard start over there, and... Um, if we can get a no, two or three old trip, it, it'd be. Uh, I think she'd like that. And before we came on air, all the guys in the TV room here, hey, what do you think of the 12th race? Super high five, 7,500 carryover. You're driving the eight, Rich Wisdom, coming off a good win at Hoosier. Yeah, he sure was good over there. I, I had the eight old, the same thing as tonight, and uh, left, got away third, and 
came first up. So um, in oh, I, I hopefully we don't have to do all of that tonight, but uh, try to get him a little bit of an easier trip. But he raced really good over there. But it's it's a it's a good division though. I mean, there's a couple of good horse in there. Uh, it's a very competitive field, so uh, it's going to be interesting. Yannick, thanks for your time. Thanks for your candid observations and thoughts, and keep up the great work. Good luck. Thank you very much. Yannick Jingra, everybody, the leading driver in North America. Quick time out, and Gabe Pruitt and Big Chuck Grubbs will be back to handicap tonight's card. Magical Acres is...